Welcome to another tutorial on PFSense Firewall. Today we will see how to integrate radius uh, services on PFSense Firewall and how to utilize the user base to allow access to the PFSense Firewall. Let's get started. So this is the PFSense Firewall release 2.5. So first you will have to click on systems, go to user manager and click on authentication server. Click on add. You will have to name it. I'll name it as radius. And I'm going to select the type as radius. And we can use MS Chap version 2 based on the configuration on your free radius server. You can configure any of the protocol here. I'm going with MS Chap version 2. IP address of my host is 192.168.1.1. And the shared secret is something that you will have to retrieve from the from the free radius server. So this is the server where I'm running the free radius service. So you can see the status of my free radius service, which is active. And this is the client configuration. As you can see, I've added the firewall inside my client section. And I have allowed the IP address 192.168.0.129. Secret here is testing 123. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Testing one to three. Moving forward. So service offer. Well, in my case, it is only authentication. But if you have accounting configured, then you can select that option. Authentication port by default is 1812 for the authentication. And for accounting, it uses 1813. I'm not going to change anything. You can specify the authentication timeout, which I'm going to keep it as default. I'm not changing that. If left blank, default value is five seconds. And the NAS IP attribute of radius, which I'm going to keep it as van 192.168.0.129. Click on save. So we have the server profile created. Now come to setting inside user manager and you can select the session timeout. Well, default is four hour to 40 minutes. So I have given it as 300 minutes. And inside the authentication server, you can select it as radius and shell authentication. You can check this box. Use authentication server for shell authentication. Okay, to allow login via with radius credential equivalent local user with the expected privilege must be created first. So we'll have to create the user in the user list. So I'm going to keep it as a default. Let's save this. Okay, so now we have the configuration in place to allow the authentication via the radius server, which we have created here inside the authentication server. So now comes the user list. So if we go back to my free radius server,
So I have two users created. One is SUMIT1, another one is SUMIT2 with password as password. So we will have to create these two users so that they can log into the firewall. So I'm going to create the user here with the name, same name. And I can give the password and this password can be anything, but uh, make sure you use the password that is set in the radius during the login process. This password will not be entertained because the authentication will be sent to the radius server. And then once approved, the login will be allowed. And it might fall back to local user base. And we have, I think, given the timeout as well inside the setting that we will verify after this. So I'm going to add this user, which is our radius user to admin group. Since I do not have any group defined for this. So if you want the firewall to entertain the group privileges, then you will have to add these users on your free radius to the admins group. So this user summit one is an admins group. Save. I guess there is no option to fall back to the local authentication. I guess it automatically will take the local user base if the authentication via the radius is not successful. Okay, one user is enough. SUMIT1 added to admins and the same user is in the radius server database as well with the password as password. So you will have to give this password while login while logging to the firewall GUI. So now we can test this configuration Click on Diagnostics, Authentication. You can select the radius profile that you have created and enter the username and password. Password is password. Let's try to test it. As you can see, user authenticated successfully. User is a member of group, which is not giving us any value because we have not defined any group here. Instead, we have given this user admins group, which will have all admins privileges. So that's that is you know something that proves that the authentication server is working fine and we are able to authenticate the user privileges from the radio servers. Now let's try to log out of this particular GUI session before that we can try setting up the TCP dump to make sure that the authentication is indeed coming to the pre radius server. So 129 is the IP address of this particular firewall WAN interface.
let's try to log out and log in again with the user that we have created. Let's try to use the user SUMID1 with the password. Password. As you can see, I'm able to log in. And you can see the packet from the firewall on our free radius server. This is the source destination you can see 1812. And you will see authentication access request. And in reply, you will see access accept, which means everything is in place to allow this user As you can see again, access request and access accept. You can see the IP address here. 190 is the server IP, which proves that the authentication is indeed through the firewall, through the uh, free radius services running on this particular server. Now that the user that we have created is working fine and is getting authenticated from the radio server, we'll try to figure out if the authentication failure on free radius is uh, kicking in the local authentication mechanism on the firewall or not. So once again, first of all, we'll try to log in with the radius user. So you can see access request, access accept. Let's try to log out. So I have given the wrong password here. And you can see access request and access reject message and I'm not able to log in. And if you have noticed that while configuring this particular user, we have given the password. So I'm gonna try that password. And this is the password that we have defined here inside the user base while configuring the user. And on the server, you can see access request, access rejected because the password that we have given this time is the password that we have given here in the password section while creating the user, which means that the firewall is actually falling back to the local authentication mechanism if the radius authentication is failing and we can prove that by logging in with admin because there is no admin user so as you can see i do not have any admin user added here so this particular access request will get rejected on the free radius services and then the firewall will switch back to the local authentication mechanism and then will allow the user to log in. Now let's try to use the admin credential and the admin is not there in the free radius so You can see here access request, access rejected 
but then the firewall actually falls back to the local authentication and then allows the user to log in with the local credentials that we have here. That's all in this video. See you in the next one. And please do not forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Bye-bye.